Hey everyone, Tommy from TechNexus and welcome to Wednesday and the third video in our series of Pen ID Week. Now, we've gone through the setup in the last couple of days and today would be a good day to start talking about laying out the Pen IDs. Now, sometimes you might get a hand sketch from an engineer or the client or someone on the project who has an idea on the, the, the process and, and the system and there may or <clears throat> may or may not be what's called a PFD. So PFD is a process flow diagram and it ha it'll list the equipment sometimes. Sometimes it might just list it as a system but it talks about and, and demonstrates uh, in a diagram the, the flow of the process um, so you won't necessarily show um, the I guess the main header and the branches coming off it but it might say that there's a, a process going from one tank to um, a, a set of pumps but it's really just one flow the pin ID gets into the more detail of maybe separating those two pumps and having pump A and pump B whereas a PFD might show it as just pumps they, they can all be different, um, again, depending on the project, depending on the type of system, whether it's oil and gas or water um, or whatever the process might be, um, depending on the engineer, depending on the client's requirements, there, there will be variations on that. But generally, there usually is a PFD, <coughs> excuse me, which will become the, the source for the pen IDs, which will become the source for the models. Now, I'm not going to get into PFDs just because we're going to mainly talk about the pen IDs. Now, the pen IDs <coughs> traditionally, from uh, when I used to do manual uh, drafting, and then you know, in the early days of CAD and working more and more with with pen IDs, I was originally told when I was younger that the pen IDs usually flowed left to right. So. It might also be that you could, in theory, cut the title blocks off and sticky tape all of the sheets together and they will flow from left to right showing the, the, the process. Now, obviously, there are going to be differences there where um, you might have a, a line that comes out of a tank and needs to go at a pump in another area of, of the project and the, the lines won't necessarily line up. But uh, from what I was told, they should always... Uh, be considered to go left to right so you you would have all your inlets coming from the left and all the lines coming out on the right hand side so you, you might want to take that into account when you lay out uh, a project or a pen ID so to give an example of that you might do uh, this vessel here so we'll call it tank 100 and we might put in a couple of pumps so P100 and P101 And to give a quick idea on, on what the flow might look like is you would then say something like the line coming into uh, the vessel here and then the line coming out. So whatever it might be coming in. And then you would say that comes out to one pump and then comes out to another pump. And then the discharge from those lines comes out and goes into the next sheet. So whatever, whatever the off-page connector is, is going to do. So it might literally be the next sheet or it might skip two or three sheets depending on, on what it is uh, and, and all of that will be sort of sorted out once you know once you start getting into the project. <clears throat> so you know from my perspective the way that's this is the way I would do it. There will obviously, like I, I said before, there will be variances of that. Sometimes um, people consider the OPCs to go left and right and, and whichever way. So it won't necessarily be left to right. It will come in from the left. And you might also have a line that comes out of the drain here, for example. And then goes flows to the left there. And then that way you do have your on and off page uh, connectors being connected wherever they they. Uh, end up on the sheet. <clears throat> so again, it's 
just sort of trying to keep it uniformity. Whether you want to go left to right all the time, then keep it left to right. Same thing goes for things like annotation. Now, there were times on projects where we would consider annotation for tanks to be up the top and then annotation for pumps to be down the bottom. And it was just something that was decided uh, whether it was, uh, again, to a standard or whether someone just wanted it that way, that uh, that's how the annotation was. So I guess it made it handy if you knew that pumps were always going to be there on the bottom. You could see the annotation and they would be close to the pumps, uh, which would, you know, if there was a vessel here that would drain out to the pumps, um, then they'd be, you know, on the ground or, or close to the ground and then that way they were close here as well. And then anything coming back out was, was up high. So <clears throat> you're, you're never ever going to get a pin ID right uh, the, the first time. It's, there's always going to be something. You might need to stretch it up. You might need to stretch it down, whatever it is, because you'll, you'll end up putting things like uh, valves and in, uh, instrumentation, um, bypasses. There'll always be a change. And also as well, I, the way I see it, I don't see anything personally wrong with having a lot of pin IDs and having quite sparse information. If someone wanted to show this with three vessels and six pump, pumps, I'd probably come back and say that's just going to be too messy, too busy uh, for this AO sheet. So you would also try to maybe, uh, sorry, on this A1 sheet, you might do it on an AO or you might keep the, the standard to be A1 and then just split this up into three as well and then that way it's going to be neater you could have um you know if this was part of three um vessels and it's their associated pumps you'd have train one train two and train three so they're all part of a bigger picture but you could make them look exactly the same just with different line numbers and different uh, equipment tags and all that kind of stuff as well but that's the kind of thing you do have to think about when you are doing things like these PNIDs so what I'm going to do is just remove this so that's kind of the things that you will have to look at is um, setting them out so again you might start off with doing equipment first just to get an idea. You might produce five or six sheets to lay out the equipment. Then you would come back and do the lines and then you might throw the valves, the fittings, the instrumentation and then sort of uh, any non-engineering things. So again, you know, for this I might throw a tank in here. So TK100 again. And then maybe this vessel and then also two pumps okay so once I get them in there I don't have to in in the PID terms I don't have to number them straight away if you already have the numbers then then great otherwise you can just place them arbitrarily and start sort of wanting to, to lay them out that way we might also say that this this is probably going to be a bit higher. So there might be some maybe gravity feed here. And then that way, it, as a diagram, it does show it. So with uh, AutoCAD pin ID, so the equipment can also sometimes have a function on it to automatically add the nozzles. You can change the nozzles as well to be a double line or a single line. You can also annotate it. So just put the tag in there. So it's, it's classes nozzle N1. Now that is all driven through the project setup. And I'll just let the project setup load. And under the pin ID drawing settings, under pin ID class definition, engineering items, equipment. So let's go to tanks. Okay, so we've got parent entries here, which will flow to the children. And we've got the tags and the annotation. So if I look at, uh, let's see if we can find that tank that we just played with before. So the dome roof. So edit symbol, like we said yesterday, was set up on the layer equipment. So you have to go into prod symbol style to add layers. And we've got scaling here. It's got independent scaling. So if you want to have a 
you know, a y, an x scale of 5 and a y scale of 1, you can. You can change it to uniform scale, so they're all going to be uh, the same scale. Rotate on insert, no. Mirror, no. Joint type, so it's the end line. So that's just where the process line stops. And the auto nozzle feature, this is the last two entries here. So yes, you want to auto nozzle it. And which nozzle style do you want it to, to be? So you can have just the same nozzle style every time you load it in there as well. So that's all driven there. And then I can click on edit block. And it takes me to um, my block for that um, uh, tank. Now with the scaling, I guess if you're working in metric, then you could probably turn around and um, and say that you know you you want it to be a particular size every time. So if your corporate standard shows that it's going to be you know 10 wide and five millimeters high, then it's it's going to be that all the time as well. Um, so when again, it's just it comes down to the, the personal preference as well. So I'll just let that come back to the project setup. Um, what else can we go through? So with you know the other equipment in here, there aren't any symbols for a gas cylinder, so you will have to click on the Add Symbols uh, button there to add the block from a symbol. When you do add them, they don't need to have any block attributes on them. They are just purely uh, the block for that part, all annotation is taken care of via the annotation entry down here. So you will strip them out. Um, with the, the layering, uh, you know, I guess it depends on how you want these to be presented, whether they're on layer zero and by layer or by block or anything else as well. So that you'll determine as, as you go through it as well. So one, one other thing I wanted to cover as well, and I'm just going to draw up something quickly, is um, doing a block that is an AutoCAD block, but you haven't uh, converted it to um, a smart block or a PNID block. So I'm going to do quickly just this to represent um, another pump. So I'm just going to create it, call it sample pump, base point, bottom corner, select objects. Uh, yep, okay. So now this is, let's say you're converting an old pin ID, one that is not intelligent, that was done with AutoCAD, and it needs to be converted. And this can happen for anything that's um, an AutoCAD block in a pin ID. We can pick it, right click on it, and then convert to pin ID object. And then what is it? So it is a piece of equipment, it is a pump, and it's a horizontal centrifugal pump. And then it inherits the properties of that. So if we look at the properties under the AutoCAD terms, you can see there that it's it's grabbed all of that, uh, the general information there that we can utilize as well. So don't be afraid to convert old pin IDs. There isn't anything here to do automatic conversions. So you could, if you're handy with script writing, I guess you could filter out block names and, and get you know some functionality in the API to do it for you. But sometimes that is good, sometimes it's bad. It depends how neat or how messy the original drawings are as well. So you will have to take that into account as well. Sometimes it's best just to xref these in the background and then trace over them using the pin ID symbology and the, the line types and everything else in here because, uh, again, by the time you decide to write a script, you, you might as well have just re redrawn it as well anyway. So that's the functionality for converting a existing old, old block there. So I think... That sort of really covers what I wanted to have a look at today with laying out the pin IDs and, and a bit of a discussion on, I guess, some of the history of it. So what we'll go through tomorrow is laying out the, the lines um, and, again, pros and cons with that and then sort of starting to get an idea on, on you know, how we're going to 
post these lines on here, or how much detail we want to put in, um, and then sort of start getting some some neat drawings out. And we might have a look at uh, the the off-page connectors as well, just to see how they work, going from one sheet to another, and what happens when there are changes there. So hopefully it's been informative for you. For a new uh, AutoCAD Pin ID user, this is some of the stuff that you will come across with. If you're a regular Pin ID user, hopefully you learnt something new. Otherwise, feel free to make comments. Uh, in the comments section below. I'm always happy to hear from existing users how they use the, the software and, and any tips and tricks as well. Um, and then we can have a bit of a uh, sort of a general discussion about all of that as well. So again, I'll stop for now. Thanks for watching. Thumbs up if you liked the video. Thumbs down if you didn't. But please do subscribe to the channel. Click on the bell icon to get daily notifications of all of my videos. And I will see you tomorrow for some line work. And eventually, maybe towards the end of the week on the Friday, we'll look at some uh, some reports and, and get an idea on what we what kind of information we can extract out of there. And uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow. See ya.